Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 48. Day number 48 from the third edition. 3048. We are on page number 255. Example 2.8.5. 2.8.5 and then it says B, part B. This is this problem, part B that we're going up, that we're about to do, is not in the book. It's a bonus problem. Don't try to find in the book. Yesterday we did part A, which was the one from the book. Now we're doing something extra, so we're just calling it A, B, C, and D. We're going to do four of them probably. Part B, the problem is very similar to the one we did yesterday. As a matter of fact, it's the exact same thing, except the equation is different. There's a different parabola, but it's the same procedure, same idea, same concept, same everything. Here's what the problem says. It says, for the given parabola, y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15, it says find its, find its x-intercept, y-intercept, line of symmetry, and coordinates of its vertex. So we are given an equation of a parabola, and our job here is to find its x-intercept, x-intercepts rather, y-intercept, its line of symmetry, and the coordinates of its vertex. If you have not watched yesterday's videos, pause this video right away. If you haven't watched yesterday's video, watch the yesterday's video and learn how to do this problem. And once you have done so, do the problem, this problem on your own and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. Do you understand? That we are about to do together. I'll give you five seconds to be able to do just that for you to be able to pause the video and uh, do the problem yourself first. Do you understand? So here we go. First thing first, we are asked to find the x-intercept. We know x-intercept is where here is the first one intercept, x-intercept, here is the other, other x-intercept, and then at that point, y is equal to zero. So we're going to set our equation equal to zero. The equation of the parabola is x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equal to zero. We're going to set it equal to zero and just going to factorize it. So we're looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 15 and whose sum has to be positive 2. Well, it's very simple. I think 5 and 3 should do it. Positive 5 and a negative, negative 3. x squared plus 5x minus 3x minus 15 should do the trick. Because positive 5x and a negative 3x is going to give us positive 2x and a positive 5 and a negative 3 is going to give us negative 15 that we're looking for as the product of the two quantities, positive 5 and a negative 3. Let's see what we can factor out from the first two terms. First two terms we have a common factor of x. So we end up with x plus 5. Let's get rid of this thing here. This whole thing is equal to 0. And from here we have a negative 3 and a negative 15. We, we can take out negative 3 as a common factor. Once we have taken out negative 3 as a common factor, we are left with x here. And then since we want negative 15, we need to have positive 5. Because positive 5 times negative 3 is going to give us back the original quantity that we had, quantity of negative 15, which is just as well, because that's exactly what we have here also, positive 5. So now, from these two terms here, from this term and this term, what we have is a common factor is x plus 5. Let's take out x plus 5 as a common factor, and we're left with x minus 3 equals 0. There you go. There you have it. And this, this is our y. The so y is going to be 0 when x is equal to negative 5, when x is equal to negative 5, because if you put a negative 5 here, negative 5 and a positive 5, they're going to kill each other, it's going to become 0. It doesn't matter what we have here, 0 times 0 is 0. So that's our, that's our first intercept, x equal to negative 5, and or when x is equal to positive 3 from here. When x is equal to negative 5 or y is equal to positive 3, y is going to be 0. So we have it there. Negative 5 and a positive 3. Those are our x intercept. We're done with that part. Let's move on. Let's find the y intercept. Or let's do the line of symmetry if you like. But before we get to line of symmetry, I'm going to redraw it, uh, redraw it in a little bit better way. Uh, uh, 
on a scale so that it looks a little bit better instead of doing it freehand. So here we go. We have positive 3 and negative 5. 1, 2, 3, that's the first one right here. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's the second one right here. A negative 5 and a positive 3. Now, from negative 5 to positive 3, from a negative 5 to positive 3, we can clearly see it's a distance of 8 units. It's a distance of 8 units. Therefore, the line of symmetry is going to be 4 units from either end. 4 units from either end. So if you go 4 units from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, right here, negative 1. Or if you go 4 units from here, from positive 3, we have positive 2, positive 1, 0, and negative 1. There you go. x equal to negative 1 is our line of symmetry. Question most, what's the line of symmetry? The answer is line of symmetry is x equal to negative 1. What are the x-intercepts? X-intercepts were negative 5 and positive 3. What's the y-intercept? Y-intercept is very easy to figure out. Y-intercept is when... So, let me, let me see if I can do a decent job of it. And I don't know why it is crooked. It's a little bit crooked and I don't like it. So, as best as I can. There we go. Now we are looking for... This is not drawn very well. The way I drew it, the vertex is here. The vertex is supposed to be here. The minimum is supposed to be here. Let me redo it. I should learn to pay attention. This, this is the y-intercept. That's the y-intercept. And this is the vertex. This is the vertex right here. Now what we're looking for here, now what we're about to find is the y-intercept which is right here. Which is very easy to find because that's when x is equal to 0 because that's the y-axis, x is equal to 0. So all we have to do is put in x equal to 0 here, we can see it's negative 15. y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15. We shouldn't really have to do anything here. Just by visual inspection, we can see that when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, y is going to be negative 15. So this guy right here, this guy right here, the coordinates of this point are 0 and negative 15. The coordinates of this point right here. Question is, what are the coordinates of vertex? Let's find out, shall we? Coordinates of vertex are very easy to find because we already know the x coordinate. X coordinate of this x coordinate of this vertex is, is this line of symmetry, which is which we just said x is equal to negative one. So if we know the x coordinate of x coordinate of the vertex, which is x equal to negative one, we put it back in the equation, we can figure, figure out the y coordinate. Our equation is y is equal to x squared plus two x minus fifteen. We know the x coordinate of the vertex. We know the x coordinate of the vertex is negative one. The question is what is the y coordinate? Well, let's find out, shall we? Put x equal to negative 1 in here. And we can clearly see that it's going to be something less than negative 15. Because you see it's going up, obviously. And this is negative 15. The coordinates of this point, the y-intercept that is. Y, if y-intercept is negative 15, and then where it's sitting, this has got to be something less than negative 15. So if you do your work and you find out that it's coming out to be something more than negative 15, check your work, it's wrong. It has to be negative, less than negative 15. You can see visually here. Let's see what it is. So negative 1 squared is just going to be 1. And positive 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And negative 15. Oh, there you go. 1 and a negative 2 and a negative, it's going to be negative 16. It's going to be negative 16. There you go. That's it. That's all we have to do here. I need the room, so I'm going to erase what we have done so far. The last thing we're going to do here, last thing that we are going to do here, is the exact same thing that we did yesterday, which is to ask ourselves, can we, can we represent this idea, this notion, this concept, this fact, that this parabola is shifted one unit to the left and 16 units down. 
as you can clearly see this parabola shifted shifted one unit to the left which is why x equal to negative 1 is the line of symmetry and 16 units down and 16 units down which is why let me erase this extra work here this parabola is shifted one unit to the left as you can see and 16 units down because this, the vertex are negative 1 and negative 16 can we represent this concept can we can we show this concept not graphically not visually but algebraically in the form of an algebraic equation the answer of course is yes we just have to manipulate this original equation of the parabola and represent that in this form which shows a form that clearly shows the coordinates of its vertex. Let's do that, shall we? And that process is called, let's call it part 5, that process is called completing the square. Oh God, I cannot write. Completing the square. So here's the equation y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15 and it's actually quite straightforward, very simple because the way it is written here we already have x squared times 2 times a times b you see a squared plus 2ab plus b squared there you go one more time our x here our x here is the a squared x is our a then we have 2ab, b is 1, and then finally b squared, which is this. So this can be written as a plus b whole squared, which means we can represent this quantity as a is our x, so x plus 1, our b is 1, right there. Let's do this, shall we? This whole quantity from here to here can be written as x plus 1 all is squared. But we can't leave it like that because that's we have x squared here, we have x squared here, see? We have 2 times x times 1 which is 2x which is what we have here but here we have a positive 1 and here we have negative 15. It's not the same. So we have to undo what we have done here. We have to bring it back to its original form. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite, rewrite this, we're going to put our negative 15 there that was given to us and then see we have added one here we have added one to the quantity we're going to take away one we have to undo we have to we have to undo what we did before we added one so we have to take away one and a negative 15 and a negative 1 is negative 16 voila there is our parabola there is our parabola in the vertex form here is the equation of the parabola in the vortex form. y is equal to x plus 1 squared minus 16 and this tells us this positive 1 tells us that it is shifted one unit to the left and this negative 16 tells us that it shifted shifted 16 units down just like just like we just like we claimed here just like we showed there so this this work here algebraically shows what we're showing here graphically this is the equation of the parabola in the vertex form if somebody asks you to represent the equation of the given parabola in the vertex form in other words in a form that clearly shows the coordinates of the vertex this is what they're looking for and this is what we have to do. We have to employ a process called completing the square. We're going to do two more problems like, like this, similar to this one. Part A was, was in the book, as I already told you. This is part B, which is bonus. In the next two videos, on day number 249, and or rather, day, num day 3049 and 3050, we're going to do two more examples of parabolas and then we're going to move on to the next topic with day 3051. Do you understand? 3000 represents, the thousand represents the fact that we are in the third 
third edition. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? If you need help, if you want me to tutor you, if you would like to be tutored by me personally on a one-to-one -one tutoring, we are online tutoring I provide. Uh, if, you, if you want some help from me, you can reach me at 1-800-808-PREP or my email address prepsat.aol.com. Send me an email, talk to me. I'll be more than happy to do whatever it is that I can do to help you get a better score. I know.